Call to order. This is the 18th regular meeting of the 2011-2012 Common Council, and our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read us our holiday quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. What are the holidays? They are tenderness for the past, courage for the present, hope for the future. It is a fervent wish that every cup may overflow with blessings, rich and eternal, and that every path may lead to peace. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt. Here. Warren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Here. Hammond. Here. Heideman. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Matichek. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Versi. Here. 15 present. We have a quorum. Now if we can all join Alderman Versi in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Scott. Looking for approval of the minutes of the former Common Council meeting, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Under discussion? There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean, any? No resignations. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. To the honorable members of the Common Council, pursuant to the requirements of Section 7.30 of the Wisconsin <coughs> Statutes, I herewith submit for your approval the list of nominations for election inspectors for all elections in 2012. The aforementioned section of the law stipulates the manner in which election officials shall be chosen, and I tender my appointments as follows to retain as much seniority and experience as is possible while complying with the state law. Respectfully submitted, Bob Ryan, Mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Looking for a motion to confirm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm the appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion on the appointments. We need a roll call, Sue? Yes, please. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Haman? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Attorney McLean? And this is dated today. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. David Beeble to be appointed as Director of Public Works upon passage and publication of the ordinance that's uh, on tonight's agenda. Signed by the Mayor. Looking for a motion to suspend on this? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and a second to, to suspend the rules. Is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? They are being suspended to get Dave uh, Beeble in his office. Rules are suspended. I'd move to confirm the appointment. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm the appointment under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Do we need uh, confirmation of mayor's appointments? We're okay. We're okay there? Okay. Uh, do we have public forum tonight? Yes, we do. Very good. Okay. First on the list is Milt Storm. If you'd like to come up to the microphone, please, if you can get through. <clears throat> and Milt, can I have your home address, please? 1736 Marvin Court. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I was going to be a little critical of a few aldermen this evening, especially Alderman Kevin Matichik, but I reserve that and Resolution 1844, another pending court action. Also, 1832 needs public debate and scrutiny. Instead, I'm going to be a little more uh, positive by showing a positive side of Sheboygan. 
This morning I found a newspaper article from my sister that she sent me about a year ago. She and her husband live in Branson, Missouri. The article appeared in their local paper, and it is titled, Husband Hunting, Sheboygan, a Good Bet, and is published by the Associated Press. Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Sheboygan, known best for its bratwurst, also is among the top spots in the nation to find young, wealthy bachelors, a new rating says. Teasley, a New York City marketing firm, rated the Sheboygan area fourth in the nation behind number one San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, California, second ranked Anchorage, Alaska, and number three Washington, D.C., Baltimore. I disagree. Anchorage, Alaska is number one and Sheboygan is number two. If a single woman and if a single woman wants to be able to afford a house, a household and have a lot of single and has a lot of have a lot of single men to choose from, that's the place to be, said Brian Teasley, president of the firm. By some of the area's single women said the rating came as a big news to them. I work in a bar, and obviously I get hit on, but I don't see any rich single men, said Jenny Stengel, 23, of Sheboygan, a bartender at the Penn Avenue pub. That really surprises me. I haven't met any of these men, said Abby Howe, a 20-something single woman from nearby Cedar Grove. I think the guys who have this money are the kind of guys who go hunting or snowmobiling a lot. They don't come across as somebody who has a lot of money. Teasley created a golden ratio for every metropolitan area using U.S. Sentence Bureau figures and other factors such as cost of living and the ratio of single men to single women. Sheboygan's golden ratio, as calculated by Teasley, was additional data from a firm called Geolithics is 180% accurate meaning there are 18 single men ages 25 to 34 available for every 10 women in the same age group. Sheboygan also ranked first in the adjusted median income where the median salary is factored in with cost of living. If you are a woman who likes football or a woman who likes a rich single man who likes football, Sheboygan might be heaven for you, the report says. Really. But you will have to be a Green Bay Packers fan, of course. Brian Smith of Sheboygan said the number of high-end golf courses, resorts, and pricey subdivisions around Sheboygan County probably figured prominently in the high rating. You've got a lot of classy stuff around here, he said. And I can attest to that. Because I came to Sheboygan here in 1957, and I was single out of the Army, and I learned to bowl with a lot of single guys over at Roots Lanes. And you should have seen the nice gals that we had in there. Even my wife there was bowling. And, 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 and I always found out that the best way to my heart, the man's heart, is through the stomach. And uh, most of those women didn't have much money, but my, I found out that my wife had more money than I did, so that was an easy selection. So I thought I would wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and hope it's a lot of riches for you. Thank you, Milt. Thank you, Milton. At a two-to-one ratio, I'm appreciating my wife more and more all the time. <laughs> next. All right, next on the list is Dimple Adams. Dimple, can I get your home address, please? 1424 Virginia Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, Sue. And thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Attorney McLean. And all of you wonderful council members for allowing me to come to speak tonight. Um, and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year before I forget. Um, Okay, I was here Wednesday night for the Committee of the Whole meeting, and I begged, practically begged, to say, give, me the, give us the report. Citizens need the report. We need to know what's in that report. 
because they said the report and investigation was over. And of course, I was told that we could not do that. Well, since I was here Wednesday night, it's dribbled out. The Committee of the Whole votes to meet the mayor's, keep the mayor's job full time. On Friday, December 16th, the attorney evidence exists for Brian removal proceedings. On Saturday the 17th, the attorney said enough evidence exists for removal proceedings against Ryan. On Monday, December the 19th, update, investigators seek two sexual assault charges against Ryan. So here we go, <coughs> dribble, 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 dribble. And then here is this article that I just printed up a few minutes ago uh, that was on the press report online. And I cannot believe what all is in there. Where is the proof? I also have a copy of the police report from Elkhart Lake where no charges were filed. And it was a disturbance. And they said everything was fine. And the mayor was given a warning and told to go home and if anything else happened. Nothing was said about a sexual assault, fourth degree, being done on some lady at Alcart Lake. Where did that come from? And then we've heard the leaks about the mayor misbehaving on trips. Well, in this article tonight that I pulled off of the press, none of the people that he traveled with said that he misbehaved. They said that he may have had some drinks, but that he did nothing wrong in their opinion and did not embarrass the city. So where is that coming from? I am saying that if you are going to go forward with this quasi-judicial hearing, you must do it now. You cannot wait because you are tainting the election that's coming up January 17th, is it so? Mm -hmm. Because he's not in a position to defend himself. Every person has a right to defend the accusations, the innuendos, and on and on and on it's gone. This has been going on for five months. If the prosecutor and the attorney has not got their case together by now with depositions and so forth and so on, then they're not going to have it together five months from now. But we have Mayor Ryan has a right to defend himself against this witch hunt. And that's what it is, folks, a witch hunt that's going on. And another thing I want you to do is to think about when you decided to make the city administrator the ch chief executive officer, and then he has to answer to the president of the council, Alderman Decker, how did you have a right to do that without bringing it to a referendum and asking us citizens and us taxpayers, is that what we want? You know, you didn't ask us. You just decided. You're just deciding all of this stuff. And now we have two of you that are going to be on the ballot in January, and two of you who have a father and father-in-law that are going to be on the ballot in January. How can you vote on all this stuff? It needs to be cleared up before the election. And with that, I will close, and I wish you all a very good holiday. Be safe, and thank you. Thank you, Dimple. Thank you, Dimple. I wonder if you're avail available for speech writing in the future for me. That would be nice. Really? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> next. Uh, <clears throat> next would be, is it Robert Thies? Robert, if you could come up to the front, please. And Robert, can you give us your home address? 1628 South 13th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay, so I was going to come here and talk today, and, you know, I thought, how am I going to prepare this? Am I going to write something out and prepare it diligently, or am I going to do impromptu? And I thought, impromptu, I think, would be the best, because 
Think about what we're doing here. Think about what we're doing in Wisconsin. We don't like the mayor. Let's throw him out of office. We don't like the governor. Let's throw him out of office. Remember, folks, we voted for the people we voted for for a reason. I'm sorry. While in the Clinton years I didn't agree back when I was in high school, so I'm dating myself a little bit, but back when I was in high school, Clinton did what he did, but that was his private matter. It didn't involve public office. Yeah, you know, people do things outside of their office, and they do things that we might not agree with. But I ask you all, who in here is perfect? If you are perfect, raise your hand. That's funny because I don't see any hands raised. Who are we to throw stones at other people? Now, I ask this very important question. I see everyone in here has the stars and stripes on their desk. Okay? What does that symbolize to you? What did our founding fathers come here for? As a teacher, as a current serving military member, I'm appalled to see the kangaroo court going on here. It hurts me. It hurts me a lot to see the city that used to be the number one city to raise a family fighting like a bunch of school children. I can't bat first, so I'm taking my bat and going home. You can keep your ball, but I have the bat. Let's see you play baseball now. What are we accomplishing by doing all of this? Now we have an election coming up, 17th of January, am I correct? Yes. So we have this election coming up. How much money is going to be wasted on this election to do what? What are we going to accomplish? Does anybody in here have any better way to run the city? Does any... I may not personally agree, I'm sorry if I offend anybody, with maybe the way Mayor Ryan does things. But you know what? I have to look at the picture as a whole. And I'm not going to throw stones because my life isn't perfect either. Okay? So what, what any of you do in your private lives, should I come to your house and tear down your door and throw it on national news? That's kind of what we've done here. Now as a teacher, I tell my students, look, we can't bully people just because we don't get our way. We can't do that. What image, what precedents are we setting for the children in our schools? And I'm telling you, the middle school kids, the high school kids, the grade school kids, they all know what's going on. They're not oblivious to this. They may not fully understand, but these are your sons, your daughters, your nieces, and your nephews thinking, well, if I don't get my way, if I stomp my feet hard enough, I can get whatever I want. It doesn't matter who I hurt or who I trample in the process. I mean, really, guys. We have to figure out as a whole what we want. Meanwhile, while we're doing all this public wrangling back and forth, I live on my street, and the city thought, hey, this is a great idea. Let's put a new water pipe in. Great. We need new water pipes in the city. My water pipe had been there for over 100 years and not a single leak. But I have a brand new water pipe with brand new fire hydrants. Never mind the fact that when the contractor put it in, he put some of the fire hydrants on the wrong side of the street, Never mind that I couldn't drive down my street for four months because there were holes going all the way across the street. Never mind that the emergency personnel couldn't get there. And now what? As a taxpayer, as a citizen, I have a street that I could literally put my clothes in my car, fill it with water, and drive it down the street in time I got to the other end of the block. Guess what? I would have clean clothes because my car acts like a washing machine. I have complained to my alderman and said, look, my street is in disrepair. It has not been repaired and repaved in all of these years. My alderman came out and took a picture, sent my damage to my car here to the city, and the city denied my claim and said, guess what, we're not going to pay that. So now we dig up the street. Guess what, this year when the plows come through, they're not going to plow my street. They're going to leave four inches of snow because they can't. And why can't they? Because there's no money in the city to cover repairing my street. My sidewalks are level with the blacktop, and now it's like a washboard. Who's going to pay the damage for that car? Neighbors are complaining, nothing is right, but yet we're wasting money going back and forth. Let's recall the mayor. Let's oust them out of office. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, never mind. We're going to hold it now and see the outcome of the election. So now let's say the public speaks their mind, and the public says, we like our current mayor. Granted, this might be hypothetical, because I can't predict the future, and I don't think anybody in here can. Excuse me, Robert, but, would you like your additional minute? Uh, sure. Move to grant the additional minute. Second. Go ahead. 
we might not like the, the initial outcome, but guess what? It is the outcome. So does that give us the right to throw stones and say, well, then we'll go on with proceedings to remove from office? I ask you that important question. What do the stars and stripes mean to you? Why are we here today? And what precedents are we going to set for the people that serve our country and take care of our children? Because remember, our future begins with change. And change begins with all of you in this room. I ask you to think twice and think about our future. Thank you. Um, have a good holiday. So. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Next. Uh, next would be Sarah Euler. Sarah, can I have your home address, please? 312 Ontario Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. I'm here to speak. Um, I'm wishing you guys all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, and the mayor, Bob Ryan, has been doing a fabulous job um, in Sheboygan. Um, he's for the buses. He's He's just been a very good mayor, and I think what happened five months ago should be the past because he's been sober, he's been good, he's been a good mayor to the city, so I think the past should be the past, and what he does now should be what people think about. And just to think about that when you do the re-election of is who's all good for Sheboygan. And the mayor, Bob Ryan, deserve another chance. I mean, I'm for him. If, if I can warn you, Sarah, we are in an election cycle, so you can't endorse any candidates. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess what happened five months ago, I would like you guys to forget and think about the future. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Next. That would be it this evening. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for speaking. <coughs> okay, under Mayor's announcements, Mayor's comments, um, first of all, I would like to wish everybody out there uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. I don't think we're going to be meeting before all those are over. Uh, very important time of the year for all of us. So Happy New Year to everybody. Merry Christmas. Um, we do have a primary coming up on January 17th. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candidates running for mayor at this point. Just so everybody knows, that election is January 17th is the primary election. We have seven people. I take that back. Eight people have turned in papers to this point. Um, the mayoral recall has kind of overshadowed uh, some other races we have coming up known as the aldermanic races. Um, we do have uh, in District 1, now we have to, um, all of our districts have changed now. So we will have a new map coming out of the, we have a new map. We have a Okay. It'll be uh, online shortly. It will be online shortly. Soon. What is shortly? Soon? We hope by the end of the week. Okay. Uh, districts have changed. Uh, some ward numbers have changed. Let's all be aware of that. Um, but in the new existing map, we do have uh, in District 1, which is wards 1, 2, and 3 now, uh, we do have two candidates, Todd Wolf and Dennis Radke. In District 2 which is now wards four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You have to remember this is all based on population. Uh, we have uh, present alderman Joel Haman running against present alderman Jody Vanderweel. So that's the way things shook out with the redistricting. Both good aldermen. Um, District three, wards 10, 11, and 12, alderman Versi is unopposed. Uh, District 4, wards 13, 14, and 15, Alderman Sampson is unopposed. 
District 5, Wards 16, 17, and 18. Uh, this is an open seat that is not filled at the moment. We have Scott Lewandowski and Billy Thiel have announced for that. That's District Thiel, District 3. That's Gene's seat. Mm -hmm. That's Gene um, Kittleson's seat. Gene, are you, did you file non-candidacy? Yes, I did. Alderman Kittleson has filed papers for non-candidacy. So it is between those two gentlemen at the moment. Uh, District 6, wards 19, 20, and 21, Alderman Decker is unopposed. District 7, wards 22 and 23, Alderman Hammond, Vice President Hammond, has decided to run for the one-year term. Um, and there is a vacant two-year term that nobody is running for at all right now. In District 8, Wards 24, 25, and 26, Alderman Boren is running unopposed at the moment. Everything in city politics um, happens in this room. It happens at the aldermanic level. It happens at the mayoral level. Um, I like to see public input. I like to see the public interested in what's happening in the city. Um, I definitely have plenty of people interested in the mayoral race, and I welcome that. Um, I would like to see more people interested in aldermanic races. Uh, aldermanic races, 20 to 40 signatures can be turned in. There has to be a, 20 minimum, a minimum of 20 signatures validated. The deadline to turn in signatures, obviously you have to take out papers first, is 5 p.m. on January 3rd. So just so everybody is aware of that. Uh, moving on, I'd like to address uh, one issue tonight. I'm going to speak on this issue now because I am not going to speak on it when it is going to be discussed by the council. This is the issue of the resolution to suspend the removal proceedings. Common Council, tonight you are going to be called upon to vote on passage of a resolution. This resolution to suspend proceedings is unnecessary and should be defeated. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. You don't want me speaking on this. Okay. President Decker, would you like to take the mayoral chair and allow me to speak at the sure. podium? Steve? Uh, that would be appropriate unless Alderman Decker intends to uh, discuss, uh, be debating on this, uh, this issue uh, when we come to it. Um, I guess now is probably the time, would be a time to do it before we get into the actual resolution. So That's why I'm trying to speak on this issue now rather than during the comment on the resolution. So sure. So what, uh, what are you saying, Steve? Yeah, uh, I guess you can speak at, at the podium there as, a, as an elected official. Okay. I will speak at the podium. <coughs> I would say, though, Mayor, if you're going to be debating when we get to the resolution. I will not be debating when we get to uh, the resolution. You need to uh, remain impartial and, and uh, I guess another point of uh, order would probably be in order if you do start debating when the resolution comes up for discussion. Very good. Thank you, Attorney McLean. I have a point of order again. Uh, I don't think it's appropriate for the mayor to discuss, to discuss this matter with a potential jury uh, we have not discussed it in public. Uh, we have gone through our attorney. We are not privy to any evidence, just the report from our attorney. And I think it's inappropriate in the event that we go ahead with a quasi-judicial hearing that the mayor has, ad that has addressed the jury. I, I don't think it's, I don't think you should be at, uh, addressing a potential jury in this matter if we go ahead. Uh, so I, I uh, do not think he should be speaking on this at all. I would agree with that, Attorney McLean. Um, are you you saying you shouldn't 
speak to this at, at this time at, under mayor's comments, or are you saying that shouldn't speak to it at all? If the mayor wants to hold a press conference with the media after this meeting, that's his prerogative. He's talked to the media over the weekend. I've been contacted by the Sheboygan Press and numerous television stations, and I have chosen not to comment on this at all. Uh, and I don't think any of the other aldermen have, because basically we've been under a gag order not to talk. And if he's going to be talking to the potential jury, then we should have Stephen Biskupic here to give evidence in the case if that's what we're going to do and go ahead. But until that time, I think it's inappropriate for him to be talking to the potential jury. And if he wants to hold a news conference with the Sheboygan Press and all of the television stations afterwards, I have no problem with that. But I have a problem on the council floor adjusting, uh, addressing this issue. If I may explain, I'm not addressing this issue as far as I am not going to, um, I'm not going to address, address any specifics on this issue. My goal is to address this issue to get the council to either move forward with this proceeding in an expedient manner, which is my right, or to not. The resolution in front of the council is to suspend proceedings. That is what I am addressing, the suspension of proceedings. I'm not addressing any issue. Mr. Attorney McLean. Uh, I might suggest if the mayor intends to be addressing the resolution that's on tonight's agenda, that, that those comments be held to the time when that document comes up. And at that time, you uh, relinquish the chair and have your comments, uh, whatever that they might be at that time when the document is before the council, and I think that's that's appropriate. Uh, I do question whether or not uh, your comments with respect to a, a document that's on the council agenda under mayor's announcements is really uh, the appropriate way to go. I would say if you're going to be, and you've indicated you're going to be addressing the resolution, uh, I think that's fair. Uh, and I think <coughs> Uh, you can comment on that as long as you would relinquish the chair at the time to do that. Uh, and during, during the uh, debate and, and vote on that resolution. Alderman Reisler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I make a motion that we pull uh, 1840 forward? And Second. Get this out of the way. Take a vote on pulling 1840 forward. As for a motion to pull the document forward, I did a motion. I did a motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now, in order to not get involved in the debate, may I speak on this issue before we, so I'm not in the middle of the debate on this document. Your Honor, I respectfully say that if you're going to be discussing this resolution, you're, uh, you're going to be involved in the debate. Uh, the resolution is to suspend proceedings, and you've indicated that you, you wish to address the council about not Correct. doing that. So I think that, that ought to be... As part of the okay, Mr. Chairman, may I speak now? You need to open. It would be a good idea, probably, to get the resolution open for discussion, perhaps before. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. I can. Motion to that second. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We have we opened up the floor formally. Oh. No. Looking for a motion to open the floor to the mayor. So moved. Second. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Can we take a vote on that? I, we just got a, a, a sec a first. We had a motion and a second. We didn't have a vote on whether to open up the floor. Steve, I don't know if we have to. I, 
I don't believe that's necessary. Alderman Bourne, I believe you don't open the floor, uh, require department opening heads. the floor to uh, department heads <coughs> and to uh, uh, elected officials. Uh, so, uh, the mayor's department head has the opportunity to speak if he wishes. Well, I strop. I may, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Bourne. Again, I vehemently oppose the mayor addressing the potential jury in this case if we go ahead with a quasi-judicial hearing. What he's talking about is whether we're going to suspend this or not. That's entirely our decision, and we shouldn't be hearing from a potential defendant in a, uh, in a quasi-judicial hearing. I just don't think it's proper that he addresses on this issue at all. If I'm going to be a potential jury member, I don't want to be hearing from a potential defendant in a quasi-judicial hearing on whether we should go ahead or not with a quasi. I think it's totally improper. Attorney McLean, would it be possible to get a motion from the floor whether to open it to him or not? And based on that, vote? Well, you could. I just don't believe it's necessary. I believe you allow department heads to speak to the council without opening the floor. And to say that the mayor can't do that like when other department heads can, uh, I don't think it's fair to the mayor. And I think uh, this item is on the council agenda for action. Uh, the mayor, uh, I think it's proper to make a point of order for the mayor to uh, step down from the chair and uh, he wants to make comments about this, I think he's got the right to make comments about it. Uh, he's not going to uh, preside during the debate on the, the resolution, but uh, I don't see anything untoward with the mayor uh, addressing the council with respect to the resolution that's before the council. That's my opinion. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. You are going to be called upon to vote on passage of a resolution. This resolution to suspend proceedings is unnecessary and should be defeated. To the few of you that, have made it, that has made it your life's mission to attack me, I ask that you now have the decency to either present all of your evidence in a public hearing or admit that your three months' worth of investigation has produced nothing that would warrant my removal from office. Now let me explain a few things. I do not think the quasi-judicial hearing or the move removal process is fair or just. But it is better than being attacked by those whose advanced, unsubstantiated political innuendo is out there to do nothing but taint the recall election process. The removal process the removal from office process is basically unfair to me, but at least it would be public and would require my detractors to produce real evidence to be held up to the light of day. I love this city and the people who live here. When I sought the office of mayor, I did so because I wanted to bring positive economic change to this city. Over many years, we have lost manufacturing jobs, industrial jobs, we have lost good jobs, jobs that pay enough for our area residents to raise a family, own a home, buy a new car every few years, and go out to dinner on Friday and Saturday nights to enjoy life, to provide for their children, and to pay for college. Unfortunately, much of this has changed. A small city like ours must fight tooth and nail for each economic advance, for each new good job, for each new business. I pledge that I would do all that I could do to return this wonderful city to the glory days of the past. That is why I am here. That is why I am fighting to keep this job. After three months of investigation and $10,000 of fees, what have you discovered? Nothing. I ask you to imagine just for a moment that you are the accused. You are accused of wrongdoing and threatened with a trial. Only in your trial, the prosecutor and the jury have met in secret to plan and to conspire as to what they're going to do to you. This is what has basically happened here. It's unfair. 
It goes against everything this country stands for. I ask you to imagine for a moment that you are the accused and subject to a process where the jury, who would decide your fate, consists of the son of a person who wants your job, the son-in-law of a person who wants your job, two other jury members who are actively campaigning for your job. Do you think that jury trial would be fair? Would you be concerned about that jury's decisions? Do you think that jury's conclusion would be based on the evidence? That is the jury who will decide my fate. Would this jury's decision be a foregone conclusion? I don't know, but the deck is stacked against me. Four of the jurors have a direct conflict of interest against me. One of the jurors has repeatedly made disparaging public statements against me. Another juror has an arrest record longer than the two pages of allegations against me. But that is the jury who would decide my fate. Even with all of this, I ask, I ask that if this is to move forward, that all of the ev evidence against me be presented immediately, and that I be afforded my legal right to defend each and every one of these allegations. I find it cowardly to hide behind some document prepared by a lawyer who was hired three months ago to insist in the investigation of the charges against me, and who has produced nothing but innuendo. This production of unsubstantiated accusations is released to the public in the midst of a recall election <clears throat> that will determine my future as mayor of this city. The timing of releasing this tainted information is, in my opinion, nothing more than a political smear campaign. Let's talk a moment about the process to date. It began in early August of 2011 with the council's acceptance of a complaint filed by citizen Patrick Gillette. Let's talk about who Patrick Gillette is. He is a political has-been. Order, please. None of these folks are the ones that, that are on trial or are. are I am speaking of here. the person who I, I understand. wrote the criminal order, please, who wrote the complaint. Now, then this is an issue that's going to have to be taken care of outside of this room. Attorney McLean. I'm not sure what the uh, objection is, uh, Alderman Sampson. Well, I'm speaking. The, the complaints were filed and verified. Uh, they, I, think, I think they need to be addressed in an appropriate manner. I don't, I don't believe here in a public forum situation is, is the proper way to do it. Those, those, those complaints were filed. They were verified uh, by yourself, Attorney McLean. Um, I think it, it, this almost has, has a sense of, of, of campaigning. This, this is attacking the, the other folks uh, as part of this, uh, this group here as a council. Uh, I think if he wants to uh, address the media, he needs to address the media on a different time, different platform. I don't, I don't believe this. I'm not addressing the, the media. I am addressing the council. I am addressing the council. I believe that I have a right to speak of the person that filed the complaint against me, who, in my opinion, did it out of nothing but vindictiveness, because as we know, when this council deadlocked, and could not choose an alderman for an open seat, I chose Alderman Raisler over Patrick Gillette. And this is the person that filed the complaint. This is why I'm bringing this up. That's not for the media. That's for this council. Uh, just for the older persons, I think uh, Attorney McLean said it earlier. If at any time any one of you wants to close the floor to the mayor, you feel free to make that motion. Motion to close the floor. Second. second. Motion and a second has been made to close the floor. Uh, roll call. Who did the second? Second.
Aye. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Voting on right now. Pardon me. Do we need to vote on that, Steve? Floor. Yeah. Do we need to vote to close, close the floor? Open. Can you? Do we, we didn't have to, to vote to open it. Uh, I don't know. Somebody made a motion and seconded it, to, <laughs> and the chair has recognized it, so I stay out of it unless I'm issue. Let's do the roll call. <clears throat> Belt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Common? No. Hammond? No. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichak? No. Raisler? No. Samson? Aye. Vander, I'm sorry, Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Bercy? Aye. Eight ayes, seven no's. It's been fun. Um, the media would like, uh, I will read the rest of this statement after the council meeting. Okay, we still have a document on the floor. We had a motion and a second uh, to pass the resolution. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd uh, like to open the floor to Attorney Volkner. Second. Attorney Volkner. We had a motion and a second to open the floor to Attorney Volkner. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Attorney Volkner? Thank you. Well, <clears throat> we have the resolution. We'll all The resolution has been uh, provided to each of you. It was made part of the public record by virtue of its posting uh, uh, on Friday <laughs> afternoon. Um, rather than go through the specific reading uh, of this particular resolution, I think it would be, be best if we were to summarize its contents with respect to the statutory authority that is relied upon in undergoing removal proceedings that is under section 17.16 of the Wisconsin statutes. That is a creature of our legislature and duly passed by our legislature and has been the law in the state of Wisconsin for many years. We have recognized in the resolution that is the authority by which we will operate under in the event that any removal proceedings are undertaken. One of the things that was done early in the process and referenced in our resolution was the filing of a verified complaint by a citizen of the city of Sheboygan, a gentleman who's been referenced in the mayor's comments earlier as Patrick Gillette. Uh, Mr. Gillette uh, filed a verified complaint on August 8th of 2011, which contained several allegations, all of which, which, which were specific. He filed a second amended complaint, again verified, on August 19 of 2011, and those two documents were acted upon by this council early on in the process. One of the discussions that took place was under what circumstances are we going to act? Under what statutory authority are we going to act? Uh, that was determined early on and that that process required twofold. Number one, that there be the hiring of a special prosecutor and the second of which that there be attorneys hired to advise the council as to due process considerations as well as procedural considerations of conducting such a, a, a process. <clears throat> The council undertook that uh, with the expectation that it would investigate those matters contained within Mr. Gillette's verified complaints and did so by hiring Attorney Biskupic uh, to serve as special prosecutor in the matter and also to hire myself to advise the council as to due process and procedural matters uh, and that was passed by the council uh, after uh, several hearings. <clears throat> 
With respect to allegations, uh, the resolution contains factual issues as it pertains to what our special prosecutor in the matter, Mr. Biskupic, actually did. That is, is he was charged as part of his ongoing investigation into the allegations to determine what matters he was going to investigate. Those matters are set forth in this resolution clearly. And it is not to say that the allegations contained in this resolution are true, not true, or somewhere in between. The whereas paragraphs that are contained in this particular resolution, subsections A <clears throat> through G, are allegations of those matters that Attorney Biskupic undertook in his investigation. Earlier commentary from the mayor indicated that there uh, had been no findings. Those questions are best left for Attorney uh, Biskupic with respect to his specific findings. However, with regard to the various allegations, I'm not going to address them specifically. They are laid out in that resolution very clearly as to those matters that Attorney Biskupic investigated during his three-month investigation. Attorney Biskupic began his investigation on September 21 of 2011, not July of 2011. His investigation, as we were advised last week, has concluded. That is, con that is contained in this resolution. And we were advised as a council specifically that his investigation has concluded. <clears throat> I want to stress as part of this resolution and in terms of the procedure that is undertaken, <clears throat> that as part of a quasi-judicial hearing, <clears throat> if a person testifies under the statute with respect to pending criminal matters, that person is afforded statutory immunity from prosecution. That is section 17.16, subparagraph 7 of the Wisconsin statutes. A person offering evidence in a quasi-judicial hearing, whether it be testimony, documents, or other evidence pertaining to that particular charge will be given immunity from prosecution. And what that means in English is that that person cannot be prosecuted in a criminal matter if they were to provide testimony in a quasi-judicial hearing. That is specifically referenced in our uh, resolution this evening. <clears throat> With respect to the specific allegations contained in other whereas paragraphs, uh, those matters do not need to be addressed specifically as to what they say. The document does speak for itself. Um, <clears throat> With regard to some of the considerations of the council, uh, these matters were discussed in closed session as well as in open session discussions by this council. <clears throat> there is a recall that is pending, and that recall is pending on January 17 uh, of next year. That is a primary recall election. Uh, <clears throat> there may be a runoff election that will be required for February 21st of 2012 uh, in the event that that is required. <clears throat> One of the key components of our resolution this evening is the fact that the Common Council, as judge and as jury of this particular matter, believes, following having been briefed by Attorney Stephen Biskupic as special prosecutor, that sufficient grounds exist to commence a, a quasi-judicial hearing. <clears throat> Mr. Biskupic, at a quasi-judicial hearing, would do the following. He would provide a prosecution which would include the presentation of testimony, of documents, of other evidence, of a great many things for this council's consideration as the fact finder in that proceeding. What Attorney Biskupic would also do is to provide witnesses and a specific procedure would be laid out as to how to conduct that specific quasi-judicial removal proceeding. That is a statutory element of 1716. This council reserves its rights, regardless of whether it chooses to suspend or whether it chooses at some point in the future to recommence or alternatively to proceed with a quasi-judicial hearing at any time it sees fit. That is a statutory guarantee. And that is up to this common council to decide as to when it may undergo those proceedings, 
whether it chooses to terminate those proceedings, but that is the council's decision. That is a statutory and a common law backed theory. And when I say common law, I mean case law. That is addressed in specific case law. Uh, and that is DeLuca versus common council that addresses that very consideration as to how quasi-judicials are done and who they are done by. We have listened to Mayor Ryan's commentary with respect to that proceeding. I make no comment and no findings and no, I give no opinion with respect to those uh, comments other than to say that removal proceedings are creatures of statute. They are creatures of common law. They are not made up. They are not guessed at. They are not made up as you go along. It is a strict statutory procedure that has been followed to the letter by the council. <clears throat> With respect to the resolution itself, the common council has resolved as part of this, uh, as part of the resolution to suspend the determination as to whether there is going to be a quasi-judicial hearing to determine the merits of this case. That quasi-judicial hearing can be held <clears throat> following certain statutory time frames having been passed, specifically 10 days after having been served with a verified complaint, there may be a quasi-judicial hearing. However, Attorney Biskupic, during the course of his investigation, took approximately eight weeks by which to conduct his entire investigation. The council, after very careful consideration of that issue and to carefully protect the due process and other afforded rights of Mayor Ryan, in terms of this proceeding, believe it would be inequitable and improper to afford the mayor only 10 days by which to defend himself as part of that process. And instead, it is altogether likely that Mayor Ryan and his council would be afforded additional time by which to conduct that investigation. As to the decision that has been made here, <coughs> the Common Council, in deference to their constituents, in deference to uh, the voters of the city of Sheboygan, in deference to allegations uh, currently at the Sheboygan County District Attorney's Office, and in consideration of the recall primary that is coming up on January 17th, have elected to sus suspend their consideration of a quasi-judicial hearing. At this time, the Common Council does not, as part of this resolution, make any factual determinations. Uh, does not make any determinations at this time whether a quasi-judicial hearing will take place or whether it is required at the current time, but only to say uh, that the Common Council does believe that adequate grounds do exist to commence a quasi-judicial hearing at this time. Thank you, Attorney Volkner. Open uh, floor to any questions. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Attorney Volkner. Um, I, I, I've struggled with this um, for, an, for the entire weekend of you know, stopping the proceeding at this point, or at least asking to stop the proceeding at this point. Um, and I guess let me back up. Um, you know, as far as the comments go that were made earlier, um, I think, you know, again, as we have this debate tonight, we have to note that we're all here not because of any action of any of the 15 of us in this, in this room. Um, it was solely based off the actions of one individual um, and that, you know, he is not the victim in this, in this whole thing. Um, many of the claims that were made in this document are substantiated. Um, in some of them, many of them are not even disputed by um, the mayor himself. But I still struggle with, do we stop this proceeding or just suspend it? Um, you know, I, it's now in the voters' hands on January 17th and um, possibly February 21st. You know, if the voters say, yes, we want Mayor Ryan to continue, who are we to go back and say, yeah, but we don't agree with you, 48, 49,000 other people in the city. So, I, I, I mean, I guess I, I'm struggling with that. Maybe you could shed some light on why it might make sense to, to suspend versus stop. But um, yeah, right now, I'm, I'm having a challenge with that. Thank you. Um, let me address it in two parts. With respect to um, the statutory framework that I discussed earlier, that can be restarted uh, if you were to stop at this time. That being said, um, the suspension 
if you look at the legislative history of this particular statute, it's utilized to address situations in which the general voting public cannot either function or as a, as a, as a creature of something as in terms of oversight. And what I mean by that is that it's possible that at the time we have our recall election that not all of the information that the voting public may wish to consider would be available at that time. Um, and that is a distinct possibility given the unique facts and error in this matter. That being said, if there were to be uh, a proceeding later on, there may perhaps, and again, there's a certain element of speculation that would go with this, <clears throat> there may be perhaps other matters that may surface during that time period, as well as further clarification of those allegations that have already been investigated, as well as situations that may warrant further consideration. The council, pursuant to that statute, is at liberty uh, to suspend or end or terminate that process at any time it sees fit. If upon further consideration of the facts, as additional information becomes available, the council makes the decision that it wishes to terminate at that time, it may. But starting over and restarting and reinstituting, uh, uh, the process could be very difficult. And I hope that's responsive to your question. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want you to clarify something for the public, Attorney Volkner, and that is on the one allegation here where we have an allegation of, of uh, sexual assault. And I'm saying, I'm stressing an allegation. The problem with going to a, to a quasi-judicial hearing at this time would be if we called the alleged victim and the alleged perpetrator at a quasi-judicial hearing and ask for testimony during that quasi-judicial hearing, and then later on the district attorney decided to file charges, that means that the, the alleged perpetrator would have complete immunity from, from prosecution. And did I understand you to say that correctly? That is correct. That is exactly how the statute works. Um, quasi-judicial proceedings would involve uh, the presentation of testimony not only from the alleged perpetrator, but would also include alleged or testimony from the alleged victim uh, or various other supporting or corroborating evidence. So uh, that statute would probably encompass that entire uh, proceeding and would provide uh, the alleged perpetrator with statutory immunity from criminal prosecution. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Alderman Sampson. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. Um, Attorney Volkner, you said, can you just go over again the timeline that we would have if we were to just wait till the end of the recall election and decided to move forward, what kind of time frame we're looking at to the end of the potential end of, of the removal process. And then the other thing I'd like to ask too is if we were to just put an end to the process, not just you know temporary delay it or anything like that, but what types of information, if we were to just completely end this right now, what types of information could be released then at that point? <clears throat> Uh, to answer the first part of your question, uh, with respect to the timeline, uh, the statute calls for 10 days. I referenced that earlier. Um, however, out of deference to uh, protecting the due process rights of the mayor uh, as, a, as a property right, as a public office, um, there would be additional time that would likely be afforded uh, to prepare an appropriate defense and to prepare uh, appropriate witnesses, documents, whatever evidence the mayor and his council wish to present at that point. Probably a fair timeline would be anywhere from 30 to 60 days to provide that. I think that would be appropriate. Uh, that's up to the council to decide. That's within the statutory authority of the council. Um, however, I think a, an opportunity uh, he has to be provided if we allow Special Prosecutor Biskupic to conduct his investigation over a period of time, uh, that it would certainly be appropriate and consistent to allow the mayor to have ample time by which to prepare a defense. All right. With respect to your second question involving the release of specific information, I'm not sure I have a specific answer for that question at this point. Attorney Biskupic has the specific information and has conducted the investigation. I am not privy to any of that information. Um, my role uh, in assisting Attorney Biskupic was only to the extent to serve as a liaison uh, to him uh, to allow for documents, the possible issuance of subpoenas and other matters. Uh, 
Um, my job was not to gather any facts. My, uh, my job was simply not uh, to get involved in the investigatory process whatsoever. That being said, um, that would be a question that would best be directed to Attorney Biskupic in terms of availability of that information. I don't know how long it would take to assemble that, nor do I know the volume or breadth of what he may have. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Carlson. <clears throat> Thank you. I, too, have uh, struggled with just suspending this for uh, numerous reasons. One, um, because we do have a recall election coming up. Everybody knows that. So um, by chance, the mayor does keep his seat. Well, we can't really go against what the public says. I mean, I, I, that would just be wrong. So I'm not really addressing you right now. So, <laughs> But um, with that, I, I would like to make a motion and admit the document to uh, terminate all proceedings at this point, mainly for the fact that if there is a um, cr criminal investigation and we somehow do fit this in, um, the mayor would have immunity. And I, I can't really go along with that anymore. So once again, I make the motion that we um, terminate all proceedings. Second. It was a second. Okay, motion and a second. Any discussion on the amendment? Amendment only. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. President. Then if, if the vote then would turn out to, uh, that we would completely terminate this whole proceeding, what would the process then be for the potential release of any of this information? Uh, because I think a lot of this information that is out there, uh, a lot of the voters have the right to know. This is, I mean, we're looking for transparency. That was one of the issues uh, of trying to terminate or, or delay some of this process was to give the information to the voters. Uh, so then he has his chance to defend. They have their chance to, uh, to, to soak in some of this information and make the decision based on what they know. Uh, and, and again, the, the mayor debated this earlier, uh, that this, these, these are unsubstantiated allegations. Uh, so if there is any information out there, then if it's to be made public, then the voters uh, and the voting public can, uh, can, can be ma made aware of that and utilize that information to their, however they see fit. So what would the process then be if, if we were to terminate this? Would there be a request that we have to make to, uh, through you to Attorney Biskupic's office to release pieces of information? How would that work? I believe that would be appropriate, but I, I would defer that question. That would be something I would have to take a look at in terms of the specific process by which to uh, divulge that information. Certainly, um, I think the council has repeatedly discussed the need uh, for the transparency of the process. That is, is that at some point, what has been found? What has been looked at? What things have been discovered by virtue of a three-month three process? Um, the resolution addresses the allegations that were investigated, but not the specific facts, uh, whether proven, unproven, or somewhere in the middle. Um, so I believe that it would be appropriate to expedite uh, the release of that information as to what that timetable would be. I'm not sure what those requirements would be or the specific time frame. I couldn't say with any certainty what that would be. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Attorney McLean. Just a comment on that. Uh, I think there's two different categories of uh, information here, and I haven't been party to the council's discussions in closed session at all, so I haven't been involved in that. But uh, from what I've seen in the newspaper and what the indicates in this document, uh, anything that the DA would have in his files. Uh, would not be subject to disclosure pending because that's an open investigation pending still. Um, I can tell you as it relates to police reports, when we get the requests for uh, uh, open records requests, when uh, once the investigation has been completed, uh, you know, unless there's uh, items in there that need to be redacted, uh, basically it's uh, those uh, records are provided but anything in there that would relate to still pending charges that uh, the DA might be considering uh, would not be subject to release okay thank you alderperson Kittleson Thank you, Chairman. I, I just uh, wanted to let Council know that uh, because I have declared my candidacy here in the recall election that I will be abstaining from this document um, no matter what is decided. I will be abstaining. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to disagree with my colleague here, Alderman Carlson, and that is uh, releasing information by the uh, special prosecutor uh, is still, in my mind, it's uns uns unsubstantiated, just as information that would be released by the mayor. The only way that this is going to be substantiated is if we decide eventually to go to a quasi-judicial hearing, and that's a, a big if. But the only way I feel that the information is going to be verified is for Attorney Biskupic to call witnesses and put people under oath, have Mayor Ryan call his witnesses and put them under oath, and then I think the... Uh, and unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to get it done before the primary. But eventually, if we go to that type of hearing, that's the only thing in my mind that's going to substantiate truth in this matter, is when people at the hearing are put under oath. And if we get to that process, then that's the way I think it should be done. I think Attorney Biskupic uh, releasing information that is from his, but information that's released from his investigation but does not have an opportunity for mayor's counsel to question that person uh, under oath, I think is, uh, I just think you're opening up a whole can of worms. And if you think rumors have been going around now as they have, that's, it's going to be a whole can of worms. So I would personally like to see if we decide to go to a hearing, that's the time for each side to present their evidence of people under oath, and then us as a jury have to make a decision. But I just don't want things from Attorney Biscupi coming out or Attorney Darrow without those people being under oath and testifying. And then we have to make a judgment based on that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> Alderman Carlson. Uh, first, for a point of clarification, I didn't say anything about releasing documents. That was Alderman Sampson. And then second, um, once again, the only way we could proceed with the, these hearings is if the mayor wins the recall. So are you really going to go against what the voting populace here in Sheboygan has to say? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Alderman Matichek. Uh, I just have to echo uh, the words of Daryl. Um, having the one that actually got most of the signatures for the recall, there's quite a few citizens in the city that actually signed the recall wanting the forceful removal to stop and signed it so that they had their voices heard through the recall. So as an alderman, I have no problem uh, voting against, uh, I mean, voting for termination of the, uh, the removal simply because I overwhelmingly heard from the citizens of Sheboygan that they want the council to stop their actions. Okay, thank you. Anything further on the amendment? <clears throat> Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to kind of clarify a couple points. The, the reason there's a couple things, I go back and forth on this myself, personally, because one, the citizens need to know what's out there, and the only way they're going to get those facts is through a quasi judicial hearing. Everything we know, everything Bis Attorney Biscupic has found, are all allegations. The only way we can let the voting public know is to have that quasi, which we cannot have before January 17th. So they're going to be uneducated voters. So they're going to be going to the voting polls without all their information. That's the problem I have. And I'm stuck with this because we can't get it done before January 17th. If, you re if Attorney Biskupic releases information, like Alderman Boren said, it's not factual. It's not sworn under oath. It could be his allegations, what he found. Uh, uh, Mayor Ryan's attorney had no chance to cross-examine these people to get under oath that side. So we need to get the facts out, and that's the problem with this whole process. And the timing of the recall election is really hindering the fact-finding that we're here to do. So I mean, just kind of throwing that out there that we, you do need to get the facts. Yes, it would be great to just stop it if we had the facts. I'd have no issue with that if the facts were there, but we can't get the facts unless we have a quasi judicial hearing. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I echo, to some extent, and people on the floor will be shocked that I say this, somewhat of uh, Alderman Versi's, um, that unfortunately we don't have enough time 
between now and then if we want to afford the uh, mayor his time. But uh, where I would disagree is I, I think, and again, to the mayor's own admission, we know what happened in Elkhart Lake. Um, so to say we don't know for fact, I think, is, is uh, a little premature. Um, the other things that were uncovered that were referred to the DA, we don't have any control over that anyways. Um, there's nothing we can do um, whether he charges or doesn't charge. Um, so in light of the recall coming up, um, and again, um, to uh, Alderman Carlson's uh, comments that if, uh, if the city, citizens and the voters of, of Sheboygan, knowing what they see in front of them now, you know, still elect to have the mayor as the mayor, then that's the will of the city of Sheboygan, and I don't think it's our role to thwart that. Um, so I'm going to support um, terminating the process at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Hammond. Anything further? Okay, we'll take a roll call as amended. Sue, could you please? Uh, on amend the amendment. On the amendment. On the amendment, can right. you? The amendment is to terminate all proceedings. An I vote would terminate all proceedings. No vote would not. Well, the amendment, the amendment would amend this resolution to say terminate instead of suspend. Right. Uh, but you won't, you're not going to be acting on the, uh, the whole document yet. You're just changing what's, that word, yeah. yep. what's in here. Then there'd be a subsequent vote on passage of the resolution as amended. As amended. So right now we're just voting on the amendment that will change that. Okay. Roll call, everybody, please. Everybody got it? Decker. No. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Nope. Koth? No. Kittleson? Epstein. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? No. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. Tie vote. Pardon? Seven to seven. Fails, the motion fails. Motion fails. We still have a motion on the floor. We to, still have a motion on the floor. To approve. Uh, the, the original motion was to have the resolution pass. And that would be to suspend? Suspend, correct. That's for any more discussion. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Abstain. Matichak? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Bolt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Twelve ayes, two noes, one abstention. Motion passes. That's right. Thank you, Attorney Valkner. Alderman Van Akron. I ask for a five-minute break for allow the media to clear and allow the mayor time to come back. Yeah, we'll take a five-minute recess. We'll reconvene at 825.
Oh, okay, for the public hearing? Any non Okay, all right. Call this meeting back into session. We have a public hearing to amend the city's zoning map to change the use district classification to property located at 1426 North 28th North Street from Class SC Suburban Commercial to Class MR8 Mixed Residential 8th District. Mixed Residential 8th District. Is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding this hearing? Ma'am, please step forward. I apologize for the delay. Yeah, can I get your name, please? Uh, Rosemary Trester, and I live at 2110 North 9th Street, and I own the property that is adjacent to the property in question. Uh, 2120 North 9th? 2110 North oh, 9th. Oh, 2110, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. My question is, and this may sound very simple, but owning the property adjacent, what exactly does that mean to me as a homeowner? We'll have, we'll have our development manager come up. Chad, please. You can explain it. You can just stand there for a minute if you want, unless you have other questions. All this is is a correction of the zoning map. The property that's in question is zoned mixed residential. The people have gone forward and tried to get a refinance, and under the refinance, it came back that it's a legal non-conforming use of that property because it's zoned mixed residential, mixed commercial. Is that it? Suburban um, commercial. It should be zoned mixed residential. So all they're doing is rezoning it back to mixed residential as it's been since that property has been built. What we we think had happened is when the city updated the zoning map in 1996, that property got missed and it didn't convert over to the correct zoning. So the people are just asking for a rezone of their property so they can refinance and it's always been a residential property and it'll continue to be residential. There's no new development planned. That's your question, Mrs. Trester? Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to be heard regarding this hearing? Is there anybody else that would like to be heard? Um, President Decker, can we have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Under discussion? All those in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is closed. Moving on to the consent agenda 18 1 through 18 15. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All our C's be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second on the consent agenda under discussion. If there is no discussion, all in favor? We need to roll. Oh, sorry, we need a roll call on this. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koss? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of officers 2, 1816 through 1823 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 1824 by Alder Persons Versi, Boren, Heidemann, and Sampson, authorizing the city of Sheboygan to extend the current hiring freeze until December 31st, 2013. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Uh, we would have to have a motion to suspend first. I believe we don't need a suspension because it's not a budget shooter. We still need Do a I suspension. Have suspend on there? I have suspend on mine. I don't know that we need it. 
I don't, I don't think, think so. We, need suspension okay. we don't need a suspension. We have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Did we have a second? Second. Mm -hmm. Alderman Porn seconded. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess I have some concerns of why this um, wouldn't be going through to salaries and grievances for mm -hmm. discussion. Um, there are positions that have been created by belt, uh, budget set, um, at least unless there's more to this than, than I've seen, haven't been dealt with. So now we're going to go back to positions that have been created by our latest budget, now having to come back to this body for approval. Um, and then again, you know, I could possibly support this um, after salaries and grievances has a chance to take a look at it in consultation with our new HR director. Um, and if there are non-budgetary position or non-budgetary positions created or positions that are not in our current budget, um, and it goes to the proper channels, I might be able to support that. But I have a, a, a problem with just going around the salaries and grievances committee on this one. Thank you. Uh Vice President Hammond. Next, we have Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I concur, and uh, as the chairman of the salary and the grievance, I'd like to see you come back. Or come there originally, I guess. Okay. We did we have a motion on that at all, or do we have a? I'll, I'll make a motion to move the salary and grievance. Second. We have a motion and a second to refer this to salary and grievances. Uh, Alderman Van Akron. No. Good. Alderman Versi. Again. Fine. No. We have a motion and a second to move to salary and grievances. Any further discussion on that motion? Alderman Versi? Actually, I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the reasons why I brought it in tonight without going through um, salary grievance was actually two reasons. One, um, I see it as a need to keep this uh, hiring freeze in place. Even if it's, there's positions created, it's in the budget for this year, it's not the right to just automatically hire because it's not budgeted for next year, the following year, or year after that. It's in for this year. We need to see a larger budget impact looking out because we need to start looking forward as a city. So as far as giving them free reign to hire because it's in the budget for this year, I think it should come to the whole body for everyone to hear, not just salary and grievance to hear, because once this disappears at the end of this month, it only goes to salary and grievance for any hires. And salary and grievance can go with three people can pass that position without everybody else on the council knowing do we really need to rehire that position? Do we, can we maybe look at reorganizing that? Outside of DPW, and, and Mr. Beeble already reorganizing that, other positions in the city, we should also be looking at it as budgetary reasons. Do we need to fill that position? And also if we do, okay, it comes to all 16, or how many other older persons we have at the time, to hear the same reason, why we need to fill the position, and where is that budget impact gonna be next year and the following year for that same position? And then the second part of that was, this does disappear at the end of the year. We're not going to be meeting again as a council until after this is done. Not that there's anything on hidden, which I hope not, that's going to happen after January 1st to come through and hire it right away, but I just saw it coming forward, making sure this is done before the end of the year so that the hiring freeze continues on. I think it's a wise budgetary constraint to keep looking at all the hires when we hire them. Whether we, I mean, we've authorized a lot. I mean, I've <laughs> lifted the hiring freeze many times. But we had good reason, and it came to all of us, not just three, four, or maybe five out of salary agreements. So those are two reasons that I have that forward tonight. Thanks. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I can certainly appreciate Alderman Versi's uh, intent, but uh, that could all have been drawn up in a new document referred to salaries and grievance. Um, maybe uh, if, if they're concerned about any hires, it possibly would be in January in case... Uh, uh, until this document gets through salaries and grievance, I would certainly, uh, I can, I would certainly be happy to make a, an amendment um, to extend the hiring freeze to January 1st of, or January 31st of 2012 in order for this to get through salaries and grievances. Is that, a, is that an amendment? Sure. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to extend the uh, hiring freeze to uh, January 31st of 2012 in order for this to be heard by salary and grievances. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I would concur uh, with uh, Alderman Versi, and that's why I signed on to this document. Just because something is budgeted for 2012 doesn't mean we're going to be able to afford it in June or July. And I feel much better uh, having this whole body uh, have to vote on new hires than just three people on salary and uh, on the salary and grievance committee. So uh, I'm not going to support sending it back to salary and grievance. I, I, I don't think it has to. I think the intent is there that if there's going to be 
there, there's going to be a hiring freeze, and I think it's wor I'd worked very well up to this point when something has come to salary and grievance, and they've recommended uh, that we go ahead and hire somebody. Then it comes to this body for, for final approval, but I have a problem with just three people authorizing hiring new people, especially in this uh, budget environment. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. If I can clarify, salary and grievances it has five people on it, um, just like all standing committees. Uh, my opinion is why do you have committees if they can't make decisions? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, question the, the need for this document. Um, you know, we, we've had it brought to our attention that three people out of the five would be making the hiring decisions, but I guess I disagree with that considering that these are positions that are put forth in the budget process. These are positions that were created and approved at one time or another. It is just filling those back positions. It's not recreating any new positions. I think if, if departments are gonna create new positions, they need to bring that to the, to the council. But as far as filling their vacancies that they've budgeted for, that the council has approved creating those positions and through our um, um, approving the table of organizations that are presented to us to just fill those vacancies when they become available, I, I don't think we need to micromanage to that point. They've gone through the certain processes, they've created the positions, we've approved it in the budgetary process, we've approved their table of organization. If they have vacancies that they need to fill and they have budgeted for that process, they should be able to go ahead and fill those positions. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Attorney McLean. Yes, Council, I'd just like to point out uh, one of the City ordinances, motions in order during debate. Uh, basically, it follows Robert's rules of order. A, there's a motion on the floor to refer to a standing committee. That takes precedence over a motion to amend. So I guess my advice is to act on the referral first, and then if that doesn't pass, then act on the motion to amend. Thank you, Attorney McLean. So we have a motion and a second to refer to salary and grievances. Um, we will do a roll call vote on that. And any further discussion, Alderman Raisler, would like to discuss it first. Uh, just a quick comment. I, I take no offense that some people don't want to affect the salaries and grievance, but I guess I think I've been transparent, and anybody that wants to come and, and speak freely at, at salaries and grievance, um, I, I hope I speak for the whole committee that we obviously will hear your concerns and, and, and make a, a decision uh, based on your concerns as well. So you're, you're always welcome to come to this meeting. Thank you, Alderman, Alderman, Alderman Raisler, and that's the way it should be at every committee. Aldermen have a right to speak. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. If we could, I would want to suggest that Alderman Raisler retract his motion, maybe go with Don, Alderman Hammond so we can maybe appease more of the group here. Extend it to January 31st so it has time to go back to salaries and grievances. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Vice President Hammond. Um, <laughs> Uh, again, I, I'm not saying that the hiring freeze can't happen, um, uh, but I'm just saying I think it should go back, um, put together a document. Um, I think the process, if a position has been funded through our budget, um, whether it's 2012, 2013, 2014, if, if we as a council have said, yes, we need that, lawn or that person to mow the lawn, then let DPW hire it. I mean, to, I think the new document should be... Our, um, open enough to allow for that. So I think this needs to go back to salaries and grievances and um, you know, if we decide to have a hiring freeze, so be it. Thank you, Vice President Hammond. Any further discussion? Okay, I believe that uh, the motion is to refer to salary and grievances. We will have a roll call on this. And I vote we'll send to salary and grievances and no vote will not. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? No. Belt? Aye. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. <clears throat> 10 ayes, 5 noes. To celery and grievances it goes. Okay, moving on. 1825. By Alderman Versi, Boren, Heidemann, and Sampson to reduce the following department's current 2012 budget by 2%, wages and benefits, and 1% non wage. The current 2012 budget by 2% wage and benefits and 1% non wage for 2013.
Police Department, Fire Department, Department of Public Works, Library and Transit. Can somebody explain um, Alderman Versi first? Does this mean 2% wage and benefits for 2012 and 1% non-wage for 2013? What does this mean? No, this, this was coming from our, our chief, uh, Mr. Modio. This is basically taking the 2012 budget and 2% for 2013, they need to reduce 2% wage and benefits and 1% non-wage. So it's not a full 3%, which was explained to be by Mr. Amodio. This is coming through him. Um, their current 2012 budget, 2% wage and benefits, 1% non-wage for 2013, which is giving them a whole year to figure out how they're going to do it. Um, with discussions with uh, Director Amodio or Chief Amodio, um, it was more fair to our department heads to have a much longer period of time to work on their budgets versus a month and a half. And they're expected to, you know, pull some miracles out of their, their their programs at that time. This is just giving them a much longer time to save time tonight. I would probably assume that you want this referred to finance, but uh, I brought it in tonight to be discussed, and that's where it is for 2013 budget, giving them a year advance notice. Okay, my my question is, Alderman Versi, are you saying that uh, Chief Administrative Officer Amodio has endorsed this? Yes, he has. Yes. Need to suspend those orders before we even get into it. Okay. Uh, we need it. We would need a suspension of the rules if you want it to pass tonight, or is it going to be referred to committee? Um, I myself, um, dealing with Director Amodio daily, um, would like to hear his opinion on this before it's passed. Alderman Versi. Then in that, in that light, I'd like to just refer it to uh, finance. Second. We have a motion and a second to refer to finance. Any further discussion? Alderman Boren, your light is on. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, when uh, Alderman Versi called me about being a co-sponsor in this document, I said I will not be a party to this document unless Director Amodio is made aware of this. And in further discussions with Alderman Versi, he has discussed this with Mr. Amodio, and Mr. Amodio is on board with this. Uh, so those discussions have already taken place with him. Now, if, if you were party to those discussions, I don't know. But Alderman Versi had a consultation with Mr. Amodio before he brought this document forward, and that's why I signed on. Uh, and another reason why I think this document is a good reason is that Aldermen are very often accused of micromanaging the budget. This gives those five departments, if that's what it is, from January until next year for them to decide what they're going to do with their 2% cut in wages and benefits and a 1% non-wage. It may eventually come to us, but we're not going to be micromanaging. For this year, coming year, for the 2013 budget, the department heads are going to have, if this passes, if it goes to finance and it passes in January, the ball is in the courts of the department heads, and they are going to come forward with how they want to run their departments with these budget cuts, knowing about it in January of 12 for 2013. So I think this will take away a lot of the accusations that are out there that we micromanage department heads. That came down in the Whitewater study. So this gives the department heads a chance to run their departments the way they want to, come forward with the cuts, and eventually we'll approve it. But they're going to have 11 months to work on it. We will not be micromanaging. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Um, my question is we have... Steve, would you like to... Well, I, I've <clears throat> got a point to, to make here. The, the caption is not the resolution. And the resolution says nothing about 2013. It talks about reducing the current 2012 budget by 2% wage and benefits and 1% non-wage. Now, if the intent is for 2013, uh, that's not what the resolution says. So I think right that's... Um, one thing if I can the point... The is not the resolution. If I can point the resolution out... resolution is the resolve there. Thank you, Steve. So, if yeah. I can point out, um, we have signed contracts with transit... Um, with the fire department, multi-year contracts uh, for the majority of their employees. Um, I think that should be known. Uh, those contracts were signed in good faith. They were approved unanimously by the council, I believe. Um, now to go and say, okay, next year's budget, 
Uh, we know we signed a contract that gave you X amount, but, but we're going to renege on that now. Uh, to me, isn't playing fairly. Alderman, Vice President Hammond. Thank Please. you, Mr. Mayor. Obviously, there's a lot of questions. Uh, question where the numbers were came, came from, uh, many other things. I think this needs to go back to finance. Let's have the discussion, and I agree we need to start early. Um, but I think this needs to go back to finance, um, and I completely concur with um, uh, Alderman Bourne. We shouldn't be micromanaging, um, but we should uh, proceed. So I'm going to call the question on referring it back to finance. Okay, we have a motion, and do we have a second to go to finance? Second. Okay. All in favor of sending to finance, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on. 1826 by Alder Persons, Raisler versus Kittleson. Kittleson scratched on mine. Decker and Sampson, accepting the amendment of the City of Sheboygan Health Reimbursement Arrangement Agreement with Diversified Benefit Services. Alderman uh, Kittleson, you're not on this, correct? I'm not on Okay, this. very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think we need to suspend for this one, do we? No. Oh. No, um, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Huh? Aye. Kittleson? Epstein. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. Fourteen ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 1827 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire one superintendent of streets and sanitation in the Department of Public Works. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, 1828 to be referred. Reports of Committee 6, 1829 by Law and Licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 6409 based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alder Person Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adapted. Second. We have a motion and a second is under Kyle, discussion. Sorry. Is Kyle Cure here? He's not here. Please continue. Um, the committee, this is kind of an unusual, um, he, came his, he came to our committee the second time we called him. Um, we were about to deny him, and he wanted to bring forth a, um, someone to support, you know, that he would be a good candidate for a taxi cab license. And two other times now, we've invited him, and he hasn't showed up, so we're thinking that maybe he, you know, doesn't have that person. So we're we denied. Very good. Any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 15 ayes. And 1830 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license number 8415 based upon her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application and her record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Please is, continue. Is uh, Kalitha Poles in here tonight? is not here. Please continue. She had uh, quite a few violations and two of them were of this year including underage drinking and disorderly conduct so we move to deny. Very good. Any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll call please. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt. Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? I'm sorry, Hammond? Aye. Hammond. Aye. It's getting late. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 
Reports of Committee 7, 1831, by salary and grievances, recommending filing General Ordinance Number 5211-12 by Alderpersons Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Sampson, and Decker, amending the Municipal Code so as to add a position to the TO of in the Department of Public Works for the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion that we file this. Second. We have a motion to accept and adopt and file, correct? Just file. Just file. Mm -hmm. Just file. And a second under discussion? There is no discussion. All in favor of filings say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 1832 by salaries and grievances submitting a document entitled Proposal to Reduce the Size of the Sheboygan Common Council Down to Eight Alder Person and recommending that the document be addressed by the full Common Council. Um, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, regarding this document, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with this plan and draft the appropriate ordinances to uh, put it in place. The one thing that I would like to note is that the, um, the per diem in uh, essentially uh, paragraph number four would be for anyone on uh, citizen on the five standing committees. Okay, we have a, uh, a motion to move forward. Did we have a second? A second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Once again, there's uh, something else tonight that I strongly oppose. Um, it's already been stated a few times tonight that um, there, there's concerns about leaving the decision-making for the city up to a, possibly only three aldermen in a, council, uh, in a committee. Three out of five can make those decisions. So what are we going to do when we have a council of eight and um, a mayor's position that we have reduced their powers? We're, we're centralizing more power to less people in this city. I, I, I think that's wrong. That goes against, I, I don't know, the democratic process. And uh, you may all recall we just went through a budget cycle not too long ago. And I'm going to really try not to offend anyone, so I apologize if I do. But I remember sitting in meetings after meetings where just a few ideas were thrown around, and there, there's a, a good number of people partaking and throwing ideas out, but there's also a good number of people just sitting there. There's also a few people out there just voting no on everything just to save face. So once again, what's going to happen when we only have eight people on this council? Granted, you, you, you want to have the trust and the belief that the voting populace is going to get eight qualified, well-spoken, intelligent people in office, that's not always going to happen. So do we really want to centralize power down to five people in the city? Five. And then, this is not a, maybe not a huge issue for some, but there's the, um, the issue of just city events, engagements. Not, a, not, not everyone on this body is able to make every event. Once again, we cut it down to eight. What's the level of involvement going to be? And I think that's important. Not as important as some of the decision makings in this council or in, in committees, but once again, we need to be out there showing our face. And then I'm going to close with um, maybe two things that were addressed or that I, that I heard in the, um, in the committee meeting. They, they mentioned cost savings. It'll be minimal, eight to $10,000 possibly after cutting the council down by eight, raising the salary by what, 2,000 was it? roughly, and then paying per diem to citizen members. That's, the savings are going to be minimum at best. So I'd rather put a proposal out there to cut our pay by $500 a year. That'll save $8,000 a year right there. So to try to talk about cost savings, I think, is ridiculous. And then efficiency. And it, if we want city government to move efficient, more, a little bit more efficiently, let's cut down half the, si um, half the number of committees that we have. Th that'll help speed up the process. And maybe just... Get, or maybe not get rid of all of them, but take away, like, for example, I'm on the Architectural Review Board. I know nothing about architecture. I can tell you it looks good, but do I really need to be on that committee? No. We have a qualified... <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be honest here. We, we, we have employees on payroll here in the we'll, city. We'll keep that in mind next time appointments. <laughs> hey, I've only missed one meeting. I'm there. And, and, I, and, I, and I talk during those meetings. But... Once again, we, we pay employees a lot of money to make these decisions. So 
If we want to talk about efficiency, let's just cut the uh, number of committees down. But once again, to centralize power to eight, I don't even want to say eight, five people, once again, because the, the mayor's role is reduced with the uh, chief administrative officer, five people running this city. I think that's wrong. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Vice President Hammond. It's hard to pass up because I don't know anything about architecture either. <laughs> um, I, I kind of echo some of the concerns <coughs> Alderman Carlson has, probably not quite as eloquently, but uh, you know, uh, I'm kind of concerned that with the number of committee assignments we have and, and maybe I think a review of all those committee assignments needs to happen. I know it happened once in the past, but um, there are a lot of them. But I have the biggest concern about a smaller number of people um, you, it's very easy for a smaller group of people to kind of influence the entire council then. Um, I think if we're going to go this route, and I, I, I appreciate uh, Alderman Riesler's efforts here, um, then maybe this is one of those things that needs to go to a referendum and let, the again, the voters decide whether what the size of their council is um, because just to, uh, I, I have a hard time thinking that the, the voters might want only one person in their district representing them. So. Thank you, Alderman Vice President Hammond. Um, you know, in my opinion, there really is that you're not going to uh, uh, glean any cost savings by reducing the size of the council. Decisions should be made um, what is going to operate in the most efficient manner um, and in the most democratic manner. Is that 8 or is that 16? How are things going to get done? Put it that way. Um, that should be the, the mindset of... Uh, in this whole, in the whole scheme of things, ten thousand uh, dollars, one way or the other, um, is 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 not going to make or break the city budget. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to certainly echo some of the statements that have been made already. It is my concern that we are constricting public input and public involvement and the ability and the opportunity to get involved in city city politics. I think we encourage that. I know I encourage that. I, I want more people to get involved. Than, than what they do. I think by doing this, you're, you're certainly limiting the opportunities for people to get involved going forward. So that, that's my main concern. I, I also do have concerns about the committee involvements. That really is, an, an, is it not expressed in this document. It doesn't explain how eight people are going to attend all of those committees and so on. I think you know the idea of moving forward with something like this without having that all laid out and really expressing how that's going to work and how many committees we are going to have or not going to have um, is foolish. I guess I, I would rather us not move forward with something and then try to figure out how to make it work later. We need to have those details here in front of us and, and we don't. So I, I can't support this. Again, I, I don't want to see limited opportunities for people to get involved and, and I certainly have con concerns about the logistics moving forward. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Once again, Alderman Raisler. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I appreciate all the support. I'm feeling the warm and fuzzy. Want to be on architectural review? I, I, actually, I know beauty when I see it. So, uh, I guess I, I'll point to a couple different things. Number one, the Whitewater study basically um, kind of led me down this path. Um, I didn't just pull this out of the air and decide one day that I thought we should cut it down to eight and we could save money, but. Um, so, so I guess there's some history behind it. I think they did some comparisons for other um, communities our size, and, and hey, if it's working other places, I, I can't believe it can't work in Sheboygan. Uh, I guess, and I need a little bit of help here, but um, forty-five hundred dollars times sixteen aldermen is how much for a budget of sixty, seventy thousand. And if we could save ten to twenty thousand dollars out of that budget, um, that's like a 10, 15, 20 percent, something like that. Um, I, I think if we ask everyone to save that amount out of their budget, we really would have no problems. So I guess this is our way of saying we can take the first step to saving money and, and saving some of the money out of our budget as Alderman. And then I guess I look at, I, I understand Alderman Van Akron, your, your concern for the public involvement, but I look at an open seat over here that we didn't approve um, for an alder person, um, which is a, a, another story that I won't get into that I'm very disappointed on. And then I look at an open seat in a district right now that we don't have anyone that's filling. So to say that we have all these people that are, are just swarming to do this job, um, I don't think that we do. And I think that um, by reducing it down, we would actually have a little more competition for people that desire to do the position and not just, um, uh, like I said, unfilled seats. So I, I, I didn't just pull this out. I, I did put a little bit of thought into it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, like I said, I think it, if nothing else, it needs to be brought up. It needs. That's why I wanted to bring it forward, so we got it out of the way right away. 
and we can move on with it. Whether we choose to, to reduce down or we don't, but we at least need to know the direction we're gonna go in. We got information from the Whitewater study, and that's one more piece of the thing, puzzle that we can put on the shelf and say, we went there, we looked at it, we don't agree we're gonna do it, or we agree we're gonna do it, and, and we move forward. So, appreciate everyone's discussion and getting this through in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Um, you know, one thing I can say, um, in one of the uh, uh, studies that we did, we, we took a, a trip to uh, Minnesota, and we went to uh, three different cities there. Um, in their uh, operations, uh, they had five board members in the city, um, and they seemed to run pretty efficiently. So. Alderperson Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, and I guess Alderman Raisler said many of the things I was going to say. We um, paid $18,000 for a study, and the, it, it says the recommendation is to reduce the size of the council and reorganize its committee structure. Um, but it is something that requires careful analysis before implementation, um, and we expect it would take some time to implement major structural changes. And so therefore, I, you know, if, if we didn't go forward with this, we need to at least go back to Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee and, and maybe look at all of this and, and start studying at, uh, you know, what their recommendations were. And, and I would hope that at some point that we could do that. And as Alderman uh, Raisler pointed out, you, you went through the districts tonight. Most are unopposed, so um, even, cutting down the council to eight people. Um, I don't think that that is such a bad thing to do, um, but maybe it does require some further study at uh, strategic fiscal planning. Thank you. Well, I think part of the non-interest right now are the, the times we're having in the city, which is why we're not getting a lot of response. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. It's kind of interesting, kind of interesting, the Whitewater study came out and they wanted to hire everybody in sight that was going to cost us eighty to $100,000 with salary and benefits, but yet they wanted to count, cut down the council where, where you said in the scheme of things, Mayor, $10,000 one way or the other isn't going to make any difference. But they wanted to hire everybody in sight, a new HR director, a new city assessor, all big dollar items. They wanted us to hire those, but yet they wanted us to count, cut down the council. I heard loud and clear last year when this first came out from a number of my constituents when I was over at uh, Kindercare on the south side dealing with a cottonwood problem that my constituents said to me loud and clear, Alderman Bourne, if we don't like the way you're voting, we're voting you out of office. And we cannot vote public members out of office. And I'm very concerned, whoever, whoever made the concern before, about having three aldermen on a committee, two public members, and again, whoever the mayor is, uh, that mayor being able to stack the committees a certain way, I'm very, very concerned about that. Right now, I don't think the system is broken, and I can only speak for our district right now, the 4th District. I think Alderman Heidem and I are doing a good job of representing those people. When I'm on a vacation, he pinch hits for me. And likewise, if there's an event that I can't make or a committee meeting that I can't make, he pinch hits for me and I try to do the same thing for him. So I think the system is working quite well, at least in the 4th District. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, few things. I, I keep hearing about this Whitewater study. Mm -hmm. I, I can gladly say I wasn't on the council and approved spending the $18,000 for that. So I, I keep hearing the recommendations from that Whitewater study. I'm pretty sure that study said that uh, our residents didn't want to pay any more money for the service. Uh, we just added for any services. I mean, that's what most people say. I and mean, I'm pretty sure it said something in there about that. Didn't we just add a garbage fee? So that went against what the study just said. The study said that um, our residents are happy with our ambulance service. Why are there people continually trying to cut it? People are happy with the level of police service we have. Once again, why are we trying to cut it? So if we're going to go by the study, we have to follow all of it. And if, and if we're going to listen to the study, I'm pretty sure maybe, I don't know, an hour ago, we just voted to suspend uh, the hearing for the mayor instead of ending it, ignoring, pretty much ignoring what's going to happen in the recall election. So how can you listen to this study but not listen to a recall election? And, if, and I know we said it's not a big deal, the $10,000. Once again, I'd be willing to take a $500 pay cut. That'll save $8,000. 
Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderperson Kath. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, I'm actually in agreement with uh, eight aldermen, uh, just not the pay. So um, instead of having this go to uh, strategic fiscal planning or possibly have it go there, I'm uh, handing it to a committee of the whole and hashing it out there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kath. Uh, once again, uh, Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. I'll call the question. Okay. Call the question. Do we have a second of calling the question? Second. Second. Second and the third? Okay. Uh, uh, we are under discussion now, it's just on calling the question. Do you have a response on calling the question? Yes, I just want a clarification on the, the <laughs> vote structure for changing this. Is it a, a straight majority or is it a two thirds vote from the city attorney on changing the size of the council? Uh, no, all of them in Akron, I believe just majority vote. But I guess uh, what I would like to know is. is well, this we have a we have a motion right now to refer it to the no we don't no. we are just voting yeah, on it motion. okay I, I guess what I would way I understand it the the motion is to draw documents to move forward to move forward that right. would then be Come coming again. to the council and right. as formal ordinance changes and so forth this is just kind of a a guide if uh, if you decide to this is what you want to do. Uh, that you would not be cutting the size of the council right. by this vote. So this is just one of these votes that might move it along a little bit, but won't actually do it. I would bet on that. Not that we've ever heard that before. Okay. Any further? Vice President Hammond? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I actually would like to rescind my motion to call the question and move that move, uh, we uh, refer this to salaries and our committee of the whole. Okay. Do we have a second on that? Second. We have a motion and a second to refer to the Committee of the Whole rather than to call the question. Alderman Bourne, the Chairman of the Committee of the Whole. I think we've had a pretty frank and, so. uh, frank and uh, open discussion about this tonight. I don't know what more we're going to accomplish at, at uh, salary and, uh, I mean at uh, Committee of the Whole. If there's any other aldermen that haven't made their comments on this tonight, I wish you would do so. And that would save going it to the Committee of the Whole. I mean, if that's your wish, I'll do it in January. But why not? We've had a pretty good discussion so far. If there's any other aldermen that want to weigh in, please do so. And we can, we can vote on this tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, now, Pres or Attorney McLean, please. Um, yeah, I just wanted to correct myself to Alderman Van Akron's point. Uh, I didn't bring my notes with me. On this, but I do think that when it comes to acting on a res an ordinance to change the size of the council, I do think it's a two thirds vote. Mm -hmm. and the way it's not there. Oh, I, 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 I brought that up at salary grievance. Okay. I Never had my mind. notes there, and I don't know if anybody at salary grievance that was there remembers me saying one way or the other, but unfortunately, I didn't bring my notes with me tonight. But, so, just to clarify, this is just to have something drawn up. But however, the, it, the right. finalized vote would require, you believe, a two-thirds vote to pass, correct? He asked if yes. this is just authorized drawing yeah. up the documents. Yeah. It would need right. a two-thirds vote once right. the documents are drawn. Right, just it would. Right. right, that's right. Okay. But right now we have a resolution, or a motion and a second to send it to the Committee of the Whole, but the Chairman of the Committee of the Whole doesn't want it there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's the wishes of the older persons, but we've had a pretty good discussion so far why don't we continue it from the other alderman we haven't heard of and then... Do you uh, withdraw the yeah. motion? Okay, Given so... that new information from Attorney McLean, I would just um, call the question again. Okay, we have a call the question. Alderman Heidemann, would you like to speak on this yet? No, but I was going to vote against sending it to Committee of the Whole, and I'm not going to support this document, so you're going to owe my vote right away anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we are going to have the question called. Anybody opposed to the question being called? Okay, the question's called. Uh, roll call vote, and I vote will say to move forward and uh, explore this with the understanding the documents would be drawn up. It would have to come back to council and would be a two-thirds vote of the council. A no vote would uh, uh, kill uh, Alderman Raisler's warm and fuzzy feeling that he has. Still feeling it. <laughs> okay, Manichek. No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? No. 
Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Belt? No. Boren? Would you clarify the vote again? We're just mo moving, the moving the thought forward and, and drafting, authorizing drafting appropriate documents. So a yes vote would be move, it, to move forward it forward and draft to the draft documents. documents to come back to council. Okay, no. Carlson? No. Decker? No. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Nope. <laughs> Are you sure? No. <laughs> what did I say before? <laughs> Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Five Joe. eyes, ten nose. Joe, just for the record, can you say I once? I don't think I've ever heard you say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how that sounds. I'm not going to say that. Yeah, move to return. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that sounds. they got a very unique noop, but you know, I don't think I've heard I. So. Anyway, thank you, everybody, on that one. Moving on. So what was, what was the count on that one? <laughs> Five eyes, ten nose. Motion fails. Okay. I lost my spot. 1833. 1833 by salaries and grievances recommending approval of the Department of Public Works Reorganization and Strategic Plan. Salary, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll try again, hopefully, a little more success. Uh, motion to accept and file. Second. Mm -hmm. Accept and adopt. Yep. Motion to accept and adopt. Second. Under discussion. This is a good plan, uh, new organization for public works, streamlining everything. <laughs> Vice President Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I would, uh, I guess, uh, at the risk of um, taking somebody else's thunder, I would like to thank um, uh, Director Beebel for this. Um, he put a lot of thought and insight into this, into the restructuring, and this is exactly the type of things we want our department heads doing as we go forward. And I know many of them are working on things very similar to this. So, again, uh, Kudos, Director Beeble, for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice President Hammond, and I, I concur with you on, on Director Beeble's actions here. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also want to concur with that. Nice work, Dave. We appreciate it, the uh, Public Works Committee, all the fine things that you're doing. And a question, you didn't use the survey at all, did you? <laughs> did, I, I just wanted to find out. Joe, does this mean you're going to say I on this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any uh, further discussion? Okay. Um, we can do it all eyes. Oh. Oh, well, we got it. Alderman Versi. Thank you. I'm sorry, I That's didn't right. see your light there. If I you also turned it on, thank enough. Director Bittner on this one. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> <Beeble. Freudian slip. laughs> sorry, Dave. Um, and actually, kind of going back to the two percent wage cut and one percent um, non-wage, he's actually already done that. So, with that resolution, if it gets passed, DPW is already done. He's done beyond what we're asking for the other departments. So it's actually the, that resolution that I brought in is not going to affect EPW in one way. Just so everyone's clear on that one. But thanks again, Dave, for that great reorganization. Okay, thank you, Alderman Versi. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving on to ordinances introduced 10 1834 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, amending the municipal code so as to change the job descriptions for the positions of fire chief and deputy fire chief in the fire department. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to suspend the rules, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Does anybody need an explanation or is opposed? Rules are suspended. Thank you. I'd move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Raisler. Thanks. In, in fear of jinxing it, I will just uh, thank the fire chief for his uh, efforts and uh, work that he put towards this. I concur. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. And thank you, Chief Herman. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. 
Cobb? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Matichak? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1835, by Alder Persons, Raisler, Versi, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, amending the municipal code so as to delete the current streets and sanitation supervisor and create the job description of streets and sanitation superintendent in the Public Works Department Table of Organization. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, I'd move to suspend the rules, please. Second. Motion and a second to suspend the rules. Any explanation or opposition? Rules are suspended. Thanks. I'd move to put the uh, ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the, the ordinance. ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Felt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. And Raisler? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1836 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Decker, Kittleson, Sampson, and Versi, repealing and recreating subsection 2. 397B of the Municipal Code relating to the appointment of the Director of Public Works, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to suspend the rules, please. Second. Second. Any explanation or op opposition to suspending the rules? If there is none, please continue. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. second. <clears throat> Under discussion, motion and a second. Vice President Hammond. Thank you. Just a point of clarification. I notice here it says appointments made on or after July, 20, uh, July 1st, and it would be an at-will appointment. Obviously, uh, Director Beeble was uh, put on before that. Does that mean his appointment's at will, or is he um, a five-year appointment? Like that. Um, I believe that this was uh, uh, the appointment letter does not have any term in it. It doesn't have a term. Right? Right. Yeah, there is no term. It's an at-will employee. Any further discussion? There is none. Thank you, Vice President Hammond. Roll call, please. Van Akron? Aye. <clears throat> Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. And Sampson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1837 through 1840 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 1723, RO number 292.11.12 by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning ordinance to establish the use district classification of property located at 1426 North 28th. From Class SC Suburban Commercial to Class MR8 Mixed Residential 8 District. Um, we have the hearing on this earlier. We need a motion. City Planning, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Okay, and we need a uh, accept and file that the RO be accepted and filed and the ordinance put upon its passage. Yes. And the second. Under discussion? There's no discussion. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1743 RO number 293-1112 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the residents of Settlement Trail thanking the Common Council and the members of PPNS for providing their neighborhood streets with lights. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Motion and a second to accept and file. I'm sure Alder Person Kittleson under discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say that we're very happy that folks out in Settlement Trail have, have lights and uh, that it's all working real well for them. They have a nice, a beautiful neighborhood out there and it's lit up now. So we're grateful. Thank you, Alder Person Kittleson. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
Other matters authorized by law. Would anybody like to reconsider 1841? No? Okay. <laughs> Pass on that one. Moving on to other, other matters. Attorney McLean. 1842 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. That will be referred to law and licensing. And 1843 is an RO by the city clerk submitting an application for a private well permit for Gerald Geibel. That lies over. Do we have a motion to adjourn? To adjourn, second. All right, motion to adjourn the second. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's once again, everybody. Thank you. We are adjourned.